Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back for a bench update. So it's been about a month already. Yep, month's gone, it flies as always. And I've been a busy bee, as you can see on my bench behind me with a smorgasbord of projects. So yeah, usual thing. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I completed, what I got in progress, what I purchased, all that kind of stuff. So I'm getting right, right into it, I guess. So firstly, let's talk about what I finished. And right here on my right shoulder, you can see finished the Harrier. Um, really enjoyed it a lot it was you see my previous bench updates it's not an easy kit at all it was a lot of work it didn't fit well at all i did have the aries cockpits that maybe knocked a few things out but pretty much everywhere no nothing fit well <laughs> it old school modeling so just getting stuff together filling it sanding it fortunately there's not real much surface detail so in terms of like rescribing there wasn't really much to do there which is kind of a good thing no real rivet detail it's pretty devoid of much detail the kit um but nevertheless, it turned out really good. So if I remember, I had like a little kind of close up so you can kind of see it a little bit better right now. So put the things together, I did heavily weather it. I weathered it maybe more than I, I would have done normally. It's just because there was no real service details I mentioned. So I really kind of wanted to kind of make it kind of stand out and not be a toy. So I was really worried about this because I got it painted um, and it did look like a toy. And fortunately, I kind of managed to turn it around. So I went back and some repainting, some post shading, a lot of weathering. I made it look more like a model, less like a toy. So I did this as a part, as a seven part video build coming up later this year. And um, so I went through everything, how I did it all and uh, step by step. And yeah, it was really enjoyable. It's, I will say it was a lot of work, but it feels really satisfying once you kind of get these tough kits and they turn out okay. So. The canopy has to be closed on this one. So I put the Aries cockpit in, but you know what? You probably don't even need it because ironically, the one part of this kit was actually detailed is the cockpit. So if I was going to do this again, I'll probably just buy a resin seat and use the cockpit, the um, kit instrument panel. Um, the canopy has to be closed. As I mentioned, you can't have it open. And uh, I did, as I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I dropped it pretty badly. As I was about, to start, I think I primed it. I was about to start painting and I dropped it. And um, yeah, it busted open a little bit, I had to do a lot of de repair, um, the canopy came off, it cracked it a little bit on the other side, the front bit, not too noticeable, just because it's kind of like part of the weathering to be honest with you, it did crack fully, just like a little kind of like ding. So then the canopy won't fit back on, because it was all knocked out of place, so I had to like do some filling around the canopy, and oh, it was, <laughs> it was crazy, but we got there in the end, so, so I got to that stage, and it looked like a toy, so I, I think you remember my last bench update a month ago, so I put it aside, um, didn't touch it for like three weeks. I was going to do salt weathering and all kinds of stuff. And then about a week or so ago, I picked it back up and I got back into it. And then once that paint went on and it, the, the, the weathering went on, it, I really got my mojo going. And it, like I say, it turned out really good in the end. The, um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner. Like I say, it's a lot of work, but once you, once, once, you see, once it's together, it looks okay. I did go to Hobby Lobby and got like a cheap little base, like $2, $2.99. And I was going to paint it up and stuff. And then I randomly... Well, then I thought, well, maybe I'll get like a little Marine Corps kind of deep, like almost like a wood kind of like, maybe I have a badge or like a wood kind of logo to stick on and then it looked kind of nice. So I went to a place called Woodcraft that here in the US, I think they're kind of a chain store. So probably in most big cities and stuff. Um, it's, I've never been there before, but spoiler alert, they sell wood craft tools, like really high level and nice like wood tools and stuff. And people like whittle wood away and that kind of thing. And the back of the store, they had all this really nice wood, like in big kind of like strips. So the pricing was all kind of a little bit strange. It's all like they're done by cubic inches and stuff. But I kind of asked and um, they cut free, free of charge. They cut it to whatever size you want. And they're really friendly in there. So I saw this piece of wood here like this. I don't know what kind of wood it is to be honest with you, but you know, it's unusual color, you know, solid wood actually rates really heavy. It weighs like probably 10 pounds alone, just this little piece of wood. And I hadn't cut it to length. So I wanted, I think it's um, 12 inches. I think it's 10, 10 wide and they cut me 12 inch strip. So they cut it um, and when I paid, it was like $8. So I'm like, well, it's like, so I got really nice wooden base and it was only like $6, well, $5 more than what I paid Hobby Lobby for a crappy piece of like, off cut wood. So I got this really nice wood base and then to accent it, I went on to get a patch. So I was gonna get like a challenge coin or, and then I looked at various places and then I went on Etsy and I found a guy who does patches and I'm like free, free fifty, sh free shipping. Like I think it's like three fifty, four bucks for the patch. So I got a nice Marine Corps patch and just stuck it there just to kind of set it off. So really happy how this one turned out. It was really fun in the end to do. I do like my set my um, thirty second scale jets. And what I did do was I uh, pulled out my F sixteen. Excuse me. 
pull out my F16 and put it next to it, just so you can, like a mini kind of static display kind of thing, so you can see the difference in size. I just, I don't know, of all the models I've built, I think looking back, this is one of the best, if not the best, I've done, I think, in terms of in, what went into it, how it looked at the final, and just the, the look of the aircraft. It's very, you know, Harry's very unique, the look of it. I just want to look over it and just really could kind of make me feel good, you know, this one in particular. So just to take one pride of place in my collection, uh, I do have a nice little set of 15, sorry, 30 second scale jets going on now. I have the, the F-16 did last year. I got this one. I got a MiG-29. I did this video build. So all these are video builds. I also did, built the Corsair, the Tamiya F4U. That came out really good too. That was a few years ago. Uh, so if I really do like 30 second scale aircraft, a little bit detail then do have good kind of like, take a lot of space up, but when they're on table or, or, or shelf, or whatever, they do really have good presence. What I would say is the Tamiya 30 second scale Warbirds, if you can, I think we all, well, a lot of us have them in our stash, we kind of delayed them and think, okay, when we get really good, we'll try them. I think those kits, anybody at any level can really build those 30 second scale Warbirds from Tamiya. They're beautiful kits, they go together perfectly. They have great color call outs, no fit issues. The only thing I'd say is as long as you put a coat of paint down with an airbrush, try it. If you can't paint good, like, you know, it runs and stuff, I wouldn't waste a nice expensive kit like that. I'd wait till you get a little bit better. But if you can put the paint down and do basic weathering, I'd definitely try one of those Warbirds. They're beautiful kits, whether it be the Spitfire, the Mustang, the Corsair, the Zero, whichever one, they're all beautiful kits. Um, so yeah, that's my 30 second scale Harrier. So really happy with that one, how it turned out. And like I say, did do a seven part video build for this one. So you guys can see later in the year, how I went about getting this one put together. So that's that one done. Um, oh, one last thing to mention on this one. I got the, the Flying 11X vinyl deck cord, which went on the, the um, inside of the cockpit. Super easy to install, um, way easier than painting the little deck cord and all that kind of stuff. The only problem is the, the packet said for the trumpeter kit, but guess what? It's not the same shape as the deck cord on the canopy. So I wasn't going to sand away the whole thing from the inside and take that risk. So I stuck it on. So if you look super close, like two or three inches away, you can see the actual molded deck cord is a little bit different shape to the decal. But from where I'm at now, you know, six inches or a foot away, you can't tell. So yeah, if you, just beware if you want to get the deck cord from Flying 11X, it doesn't quite, not quite the same shape as the cockpit, unfortunately. But there you go. So I did that one. Um, that one's finished. Then um, in between, I well, actually I was building the SU-33, which we'll talk about in a minute, and that's getting on my nerves a little bit, so I needed a break. So I did a little bit of Mojo build, and I built the big end. I built one of these before in the Elite Camo. This time I did in the gray scheme. Um, I'm going to drop it, but I'll put again, I'll put a little video up so you can, right now so you can see it close up. So this was a fantastic kit, special hobby kit, semi-second scale. It's really nice kit because it has a perfect level of detail. It's not one of the semi-second scale kits which you throw together in five minutes, it's like one sprue. And it's not one of those that has like 10 million tiny little detail parts to put on. It's just a really, I think for me, it's a perfect level of detail and parts for a semi-second scale kit. I did add uh, aftermarket quite a few, well, I used a few. I used the seat and I used the flaps. The flaps are molded up in this one. So I cut flaps off and I put the drop flaps on. Um, but it's a really cool jet and I really, like this, these big and special hobby kits. If you look for a semi-second scale, like nine, 80s, 90s jet, I definitely recommend these. They, there's like four different types, I think. I did, like I said, I got a two-pack with a two-seater metallic, like natural metal one. Comes with, I did a leaf camo. It comes with a nice book. Um, this is a single pack. They're not very expensive, like 25 bucks. So this is a single pack of the JA37. And then they do one like an air show scheme with like a faded blue kind of look, I think. So yeah, so that was really cool. That went together literally like a week, week and a half. Kind of like a mojo build. So I built that one. So that's two completed in a month, which is really cool. So that's my completed. Now my work in progress. So you can see behind me. So I kind of want, I kind of going off a little bit here and um, the camera just moved a little bit, which is kind of weird. Let me move that back a little bit. There we go. I'm not sure why it moved. It's unusual. Okay, so these are done and are in progress. So as you know, I've been, Chomping away at the SU-33, which I'm not enjoying, to be honest with you. It's just, um, it's it's a nice kit, nice detail, but it's way over-engineered. Like, this here is 62 parts. The Challenger car we're talking about behind me is 50 parts, the whole kit. There's more in that little part than the whole kit behind me. It's just 
some people are into that kind of, into that kind of stuff and fair play to you but i'm just not into like tiny details like that's why i never do like a warship because it drive me crazy a tiny little bits and don't get me wrong i have some really expensive nice tweezers but so many pieces of blown off in a carpet monster because they're so little microscopic tiny it's ridiculous um but nevertheless you know i'd be working chomping away here got some pieces done i'm just doing it slow time so i spent like an hour or two working on it i'll put it away for a week and then I'll... the camera keeps moving it's kind of weird right maybe it's just not locked in there we go just try that i thought my tripod's really weird the tripod's moving but anyway anyway so um Actually, 33, I've lost my train of thought. So I'm just, yeah, working it for a couple of hours and then I put it to the side, work on one of these other great kits and then go back to it, do a couple more hours and then just like that, just to really get the small parts out of the way. Once I get this thing put together and get to the painting, whatever, it'll be fine. I'm a little bit nervous about the painting stage. I'm just nervous, but there's so many tiny little details and photo etch all around the outside of the aircraft, like especially on the wing fold. And if I try to mask the camo, it's just gonna rip it all up. So I keep my fingers crossed this stuff's gonna stay in place because the, the camo is pretty intensive, the camo set for this. There's a lot of like little parts and um, a lot of masking and stuff to do. So that's the SU-33, I don't really need to talk much more about that. So it, I'm getting on there, like I say, once it's together, it'd be fine, just get painting and stuff, but it, it's a bit of a slow process. If you like, if you, if you like your 700 scale, like battleships and stuff, then you should probably buy this. But if you're not into the ships, I wouldn't necessarily do it. Just my comparison is just because of time more parts and details and stuff. Um, so that's the SU-33. Then these couple of kits behind me. So let's talk about this guy, which you might remember I did a review of this last year. The AMP KC-10 Extender. This guy. 1144 scale. So I fought around with it about Christmas time and now again take out the box. So at the weekend, I, I was, didn't have the kids at the weekend. I had weekends myself. So didn't want to work on the SU-33 and I finished the Harrier so I pulled this one out so it's horrible it's it's I think they're AMP I think they're Ukrainian possibly I'm seeing a flag there so I think they're from Ukraine this kit wasn't like my KC-135 which went together beautifully it's basically it's one of those kits where it looks good now but basically it was just a case of just getting it together and then just filling going crazy like, there's gaps everywhere just filling it and then just sounding it down um Rescribing that kind of stuff. Um, it's a, this is primer coat right now. I used the Rallycam primer, which isn't too far away from the real color, to be honest with you. So I used a hell of a lot of stuff. I'm pretty happy because it's all pretty much seamless. But just give you an idea, there's gaps all over the place. The wings, if I was to put the wings flush with the um, kind of top, there's a huge gap. The wings would be like like that. And the really the wings should be like you know like that. So I had to, I, I had basically had like a three mil gap, a huge gap on each side. So I put plastic card in and sprue glue and work it out. I got rid of gap, it needs a little bit more work still, but I got to where I want it to be. Um, but yeah, this isn't, <laughs> fortunately there's no rivets on this one, so it's pretty easy to rescribe and stuff. There's only a few power lines. It's gonna look good once it's painted or whatever and stuff, but I think it looks okay now. It looks like a KC-10, right, or a DC-10. The engines obviously need to go on and gear and stuff, but. Yeah, it's, this was, um, what I found with this was good, I actually went in the kitchen, the kitchen sink, and I wet sanded it. So I had the kitchen sink running, the water, and there's so much stuff, dust and stuff going on, I literally just had it under the sink, and then with my sanders, just sanded it, sanded it away, then dipped it under the water, washed it away, sanded it, like that, keep doing it, so all the dust kind of went with the water and down the sink, basically. But I sanded it, tons of, again, tons, I couldn't imagine about sprue goo and super glue and stuff I use on this thing, but... I beat in submission. I got the um, let's say got it together. Uh, the back end is separate to this. So there's, and then there's the bottom section. So there's, there's probably one, two, three, four, five. At least five parts make up the fuselage. Plus you got the wings. Um, so yeah, it wasn't fantastic at all. But I'm happy with how it looks now. It looks pretty cool. The only problem I have now is this is one one four four, but it's a big aircraft. And look at the wingspan on this thing. How big it is. <laughs> Is, so I put it against my 30 second scale F-16. It's about the same size in terms of like length and width. So I'm not sure where I'm gonna put this. It's, it's a weird shape. You see in the wingspan, I just compared to go on the wall or something, I guess, but it's really big. My KC-135 is tiny compared to this. It's a big beast, just that wingspan. But yeah, so that's that guy. Like I said, it's, um, I'm kind of happy. Now I'm kind of happy. I've got a little bit of work to do. You know, there's a few little patches here and there to take care of. Now I've got primer on, the wings, definitely, wing seams definitely need a little bit more work. 
but once that's done, the paint goes on, it's going to look pretty good, I think. Yep, there you go, get the KC-10. Then, I got myself this. So, this is the AMT Challenger, 2009 Dodge Challenger RT. Now, the reason I got this is, I'm actually coming up to a milestone birthday in um, less than two weeks now. Not, not this weekend, next weekend, I come up to a milestone birthday. So, I think I'm at the stage where the midlife crisis comes in and run out and buy a sports car or whatever. So, <laughs> rather than me going out and spend $35,000 on a Dodge Challenger, um, which I think is a pretty cool looking car. I think it's just, I have all the muscle cars right now, with the Camaro, the uh, Mustang, and the Challenger. I do like the Challenger, just because it has an old school kind of retro kind of look to it. It may not be the best, fastest, or the best handling, or whatever, but just look-wise, it has that cool kind of like look. So, I, I was looking online, and they do a color called Sublime Green, which you see right behind me, which is a very vibrant, cool looking color. So I bought this kit, and I gotta say, it's a fantastic kit. It's not expensive at all. It's like a $22 kit, I think. They have on Amazon Prime. Um, I actually went to my local model store, and yeah, I don't go to Hobby Wald much because the price is so expensive, but I went to Hobby Wald, looked around the cars, and I think I took a little video. So if I remember, I kind of, while well, I talk now, I'll kind of show you my little video of my tour and what they have in there. So when it comes to the AMT kits and the Rebel kits, here in the US, they're, they're pretty cheap. They're like, you're looking between like 20, up to like $28 kind of price range. So they have quite a few different ones. They have, um, so they have this kit here, which is a, like I say, a 2009 Dodge Challenger. And it's a really simple kit. There's only 50 parts. Um, there's not tons of chrome on this thing. It's uh, the clear parts have, actually have the, the rubbers like, pre-painted around it. So you can kind of see there. And there's not much parts to it. It goes together really nicely so far. Simple little kit. So for like a mojo build, car build, or even for kids or whatever, I really like these this kit. It's like I say, not tons, no engine in this, which makes it for a mojo build, makes it super simple, less complicated. And I really kind of like this. So one, so to, to be honest with you, I actually ordered it on Amazon Prime and it's on a Sunday and it's gonna be delivered like on a Tuesday. So that 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 Sunday afternoon I went to my model store to see if I can buy the green paint, because Model Master paint is discontinued, they're long longer around, the testers paint. So I thought maybe Hobby World might have some. So I went there, got paint, and they had the same kit. So the same, it was the same price. So I thought, rather buy from Amazon, I'll just support my local store. So I bought it there and then, and I canceled my Prime order. So I got the paint and the car. And uh, yeah, so I got picked up the paint. I thought, cool, rail account. I don't mind using rail accounts for cars. You know, sometimes easier than airbrushes. Got home, and I realized, oh shit, it's the um, enamel, not lacquer. So it's enamel paint, which I didn't realize. I didn't even know you get enamel spray paint. So. I thought we lack of enamel, um, but it turned out okay. So I used about, I think to spray it, probably about maybe like two fifths, maybe half of one of these is what it took. A lot of people, I looked online how to use it, a lot of people complaining, but I didn't really have an issue spraying it. I just did light coats. So it took me four coats and uh, each coat I left about 10, 15 minutes in between. So I went outside and just sprayed light coat, put it in a box, get the dust off it. 10 minutes later, took it out, another coat. So I said, did like four of those and hose it on just like light coat. Um, quick like spray all over four of those and then the instructions say on the can say leave it for 40 to 8 to 72 hours to cure being enamels I did it three days ago so it should be fully cured but just for safety I'm gonna leave it like a week so I don't touch it so I'm gonna show you kind of how great this looks out of a can it looks really good there's no clear coat this is just the paint and just look how cool that looks S straight out can now the surface is a little if you look really close it's not totally smooth um, but I'm good enough with that way my cars go, but just that's that and then the hood uh, It's done separately There you go, and it's just a, it's just an awesome looking color and I'm just reading for a spray can not an airbrush I mean, I think it came out really good for a rattle can um, You know probably again being enamel, so I'm not a big fan of enamels, but there you go like I say be patient let it leave it a week to dry and I should be good to go I'm, Like I say it's not clear coated yet, but it looks really shiny. So I mean yeah, looks really cool. So I'm really happy how this turned out. So I've built, obviously painted the outside. I've got to paint the interior. And then it should be pretty much straight together. There's no engine or anything. So it should be pretty easy kind of, well, I don't want to jinx it. But I'm going to do the wheels. I took the chrome off. And then I'm going to paint them black. So I can do black wheels, uh, black spoiler, black front end. Uh, but yeah, I just something a little bit different. So you see my crazy weathering with Harrier. So I thought I'd do weathering. So let's do something shiny and glossy. So I did this guy. But yeah, this AMT 
challenger kit. Again, it's this one. I can't say how highly I recommend it so far. It's um, for a Mojo build. It's so easy to go together. It's just like I said, no engine to deal with, a little few parts. And um, yeah, I think the shape looks good. And that rattle can came out beautiful. So can't complain. So that's it. So that's what I've been working on. So I've been a busy bee the last month. I mean, working a lot of stuff. So what else to talk about? Um, oh, broke my Procon Boy airbrush. <laughs> I did. I don't know, I did what everybody says you shouldn't do, and that is um, over tighten the, the nozzle. And uh, I broke, broke the nozzle, and worse, worse than that, I actually sheared it off inside the um, the head of the, the brush. So it was a double whammy. So not only do you need to buy a nozzle, I have to buy a new front end to the bit that it screws onto. So it's like a $50 mistake. So it is what it is. Um, I don't know why I over tightened it. I never do normally. Somehow, I just, something in my mind, I just tied it way too much. It snapped right off, no problem at all. So. Need to buy, lucky I have a few airbrushes. It's my acrylic one. I do need to change my strategy up. I have an airbrush for black is an airbrush for acrylics. I've been putting my Tami XF paints and guns through my acrylic brush, but as you know, they're not pure acrylics, they're synthetic. So it's still gumming up with the model air and the um, develop the layout of pure acrylics. It's not liking that at all. So I'm gonna get, need to get a new nozzle ordered from Spray Gunner and um, once I get that, I'll just use it purely just for basically model color, sorry, model air and pure acrylics, which is barely any of my paints. Most of my paints are lacquer now. And then all my tamis I'll put from my lacquer brush. Just the safest way to do it. It just if you even though you clean up between the in between and stuff, just even if you use like IP or whatever to clean up your airbrush and you got some of that that um residue of the, the model model um Vallejo model model air paint in there, it just um, or the game air, it just gums it right up, um in terms of chewing gum basically. So yeah, so that's my plan moving forward with the airbrush. So I've got the airbrush, um, and that is pretty much it in terms of what I've been up to and doing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this bench away, clean it down, and get all the stuff put away so I don't break it, and I'll bring out some purchases. So I bought a few things. So what I say, I, I was lucky. So that Tami F14 I got right now on the build series on a Friday, I actually sold it, Some somebody bought it from me. So they gave me a good price for it, I sold it and I shipped it a week ago, I haven't heard anything since, so fingers crossed it arrived in one piece. Although I did find out this morning, well actually last night, I found um, the fuel tank lying around, so I don't know what happened there, maybe it fell out when I tried to pack it or something, so if you're watching, I, I put in a box, it's going to the post office this morning, so it'll be straight out to you, the missing fuel tank, so if you're wondering where you only got one fuel tank, that's why it is, but yeah, I sold it, um, and that money I basically used to um, fund some purchases, which I'll show you in a minute, so we put back in the hobby. Um, what I've kind of come, kind of come to conclusion to is I have quite a few built models. I have a few, you know, now, a few like the Harrier and F-16, a few kind of, especially the 32nd scale ones, are kind of close to me and I, I'll keep, I will not sell, but a lot of them I don't really have any physical attachment. My, my thing is all about building, the process of building and enjoying the building. And once they're built, most of them I don't really care too much about, to be honest with you, if they, you know, what happened to them. So they take up space. So last few weeks I've started putting some on YouTube and, sorry, YouTube, um, eBay. And I'm um, actually getting good prices for them. And, and I put, I had, a, I built the rye filled tank I built recently. I put it on like a, an auction for like starting like 99 cents or something. And I expected maybe get like 60 bucks for it. That sold for like over 100 bucks, 110 dollars or something. So this some of the stuff you know I have no attachment for is actually going for pretty good money. So I'm, I'm selling the stuff um, and just reinvesting back in the hobby and buying new kits and um, new stuff and funding other projects. So that's kind of yeah. So if I say a few kits, like say I'm keeping because you know. For now because they mean i kind of enjoy them and like looking at them but most of them i don't really have much attachment so a lot of my older stuff so of course another thing too is that you find is as time goes on you get better and your skills get better you get you get better at what you do every i find for me every month every year my stuff gets better and better if you look back at my older stuff so i feel some of my older things from you know two years ago i'll sell it because if i buy the kit again i'll do a better job now you know my skills are to the level where i know i do things a certain way if i do it again i'll do it maybe a little better a little bit differently maybe so that's my my thought process. So I said the F14's gone, fortunately it's gone to a good, good home. Somebody's gonna appreciate it. It was actually, I had no space for it. So to be honest, it was put in one of my kit, empty kitchen cabinets out the way in the shelf. So it wasn't even on display. So it's gone to a good home and the, the guy wanted the F1, so it worked out perfect for him. So fingers crossed again, I haven't heard from him. So hopefully it arrived in one piece. I packaged, packaged like cra crazy about bubble wrap on and stuff on that thing to go to Michigan. So hopefully it's good. Um, so, okay, so let me clear this away and get the purchases and I'll be right back.
Okay, so you might want to get yourself a drink because we got a lot to go through, quite a big loot, um, bigger than usual. So it might seem a little bit of time to go through all this stuff. Um, so I should mention, not only did I sell my F-14 Tomcat, the built one, but I also did a bit of a stash clear out. I typically do this about every nine to 12 months. So I go through all my kits and my stash, and then, you know, I, as all of us, our taste change, we're into different things. I just kind of clear stuff out. So I had some things like I wasn't going to touch. Well, those kind of things where you look at the stash, and when you think about building something, you look at it and you put it back, you never kind of build it. And it happens, you know, over a course of a year or two, you keep picking it up and I want to build this, put it back. So I just move it on. So I had a couple of like MiG 21s from Edward 48 scale. One was a limited edition. Uh, what else? AMK, Kefir, mm, a couple of like armor kits, a warship in Indianapolis. I'm not going to build any boats, so I don't know why it's in my stash. So what kind of stuff I put through, churn it through, and, and usually, the way kits go, I normally get my money back on it, so whatever I pay when I buy it, you know, on the front end, when I sell it on eBay and off the fees and stuff, I normally get back what I got into it most of the time, so it's not a big deal. So I cleared some stuff out and I brought space for new stuff, so tune back in the year and some of this stuff might be up again for sale. So the first thing, I okay, start with lots of little stuff, but let's start with the, um, this thing first. So first of all, these Tupperwares, these containers, if you're in the US, Dollar Tree, they're a dollar each. So this size in particular and this one, they're great for keeping your spare parts in. So I bought a few of these, and um, this one has some like old like microfiber cloths in, uh, new microfiber cloths in, you know, stop scratching and stuff. But these are, these are really cool. So my, you saw earlier my MiG, MiG, uh, MiG, my SU-33, I keep all my parts in these, so they get lost. So they're kind of really handy. So if you're in a dollar store, you want to stop by different sizes, but these kind of tumblewares work really good just to kind of keep your bits together as you're building stuff. So that's the first one. So pretty straightforward. Um, Continue with small stuff. This stuff actually just arrived not long ago. A um, few aftermarket bits I got, and um, we'll start with this, which is the Ares gun bay for the F5. So, as you meant, as in, I'm keeping keep my promise. I mentioned in previous episodes on this, but this year I'm kind of dialing it back on aftermarket. If it's if I don't, if it's not make a huge difference. So you don't see it. I'm not bothering. But this is pretty prominent. The gun bay is open and. The thing with the kit is the actual panel is already cut away. The panel is a, it's really there, so you just, it should be pretty easy. You just go straight in, slot straight in. There's no cutting or anything because they say it's still oh, it's really open on the kit. You know, a panel, plastic panel goes over it. So fingers crossed, it should be a pretty easy fix and just create a lot of detail. So I've got a gun bay for the F5, for the AFE kit. Beautiful kit, AFE kit. And a couple of things. You know, last, episode, last month, remember I got the A6 Intruder. So I got the mask set. And I got a couple of seats for it. Next up, I got my mask set for my SU-33 for the camo. Note that it's actually in little tiny pieces and you have to fill it in. Normally when you get mask sets, normally for the whole kind of thing, you stick on like the whole kind of part you're masking. This is just the outline. As with the kit, this looks pretty complicated. Most prices there. Uh, did arrive pretty quickly. Ordered on eBay from China. It's the cheapest price. Had like a six week kind of lead time, but I got it in like three weeks. So not that anywhere near painting it, but I got the mask set. Again, it's um, it's Galaxy. Is it Galaxy? Yeah, Galaxy models. And this this is for the Red Eighty. So I guess each one has different camo schemes. This is Red Eighty. Cool. Next up, this guy Citadel. Mold line remover. Now, I've seen a few people use these online recently, and I, to be honest, I always use my. Where is it? Uh, my trumpeter one here, which works pretty good, but it's it's kind of angled, and sometimes it's hard to kind of get get where you want to go with it. Um, so it kind of looks like this, and actually works really good. It's better than the trumpeter one by miles. It's actually a really good mold line scheme. Seems great, but it works because it's a flat surface. It works really, really good. So. When I was working on the KC-10 we just talked about earlier, I used this out and it, it worked really well. So I'm going to use this and in a minute we're going to talk about a Talary kit, a Talary kit I got, um, which is going to come in use for. But this is Citadel, again, it's on eBay, it wasn't very expensive, it was about $15 shipped. But it's the um, Citadel mold line remover and it, it, say I tried it already and it works really good, better than any modeling, other modeling stuff I have. Um, just run it across, it takes the you know, mold lines on the or seam lines out, whatever you're working on. So that's that guy. Um, before we hit the kits, I guess last one I'll talk about is this guy from Tusk Model. 
So Tusk model is a company on AliExpress. So if you're not aware of AliExpress, it's basically like a Chinese eBay. It's aliexpress.com, AliExpress. You get all kinds of cheap stuff. Normally if you go on eBay and see random stuff like, I don't know, tweezers or whatever, you go to AliExpress, it's normally cheaper. Uh, for pennies, you get your drill bits there, all, anything. You get Lego, fake Lego there, all kinds of stuff. So this one is, if I know Luke's a subscriber to my channel, so Luke with next, if you're watching, this one's for you. You're gonna like this one. So this is a bust, one tenth bust. And this, before I open it and say, say how much I paid for this, this is shipped from China to my door, it was about $15 for a one tenth bust. But when you see the, how crisp this is, you're gonna be pretty impressed, hopefully. So first of all, let me kind of pull out the, the picture so you can see what it is. So I guess what it is, is this guy, which is like a um, government contractor or maybe like a US Special Forces kind of modern day kind of thing. So you have these two pictures, which really cool help the painting. So that's what he looks like, the baseball cap. Now they do modern stuff. They have um, World War II, like German soldiers, German American. They have like fantasy like stuff. And it comes with this big decal sheet too. And let me kind of show you, open these bags and really kind of show you what's going on here. So you have to kind of, it's resin obviously, and you have to kind of build this thing. So here's the body. Again, see how crisp that is? That's a really nicely molded resin. So there's a body in the body armor. Maybe that's like, I don't know, a camel pack on the back or something, I don't know. Right? Um, so that's on that side. On the other side, you get some bags with little pieces. So you, I think you open all this. So you got the arms, and you got I don't know, some bit of armor, some straps, uh, some webbing, that kind of stuff. So you get these glue on. And then you got the face, and you got the gun here. So let me show you this face. So the baseball cap, the, the peak of the cap is separate. You have to glue it on, so it's missing. So it makes it easier to paint the face. But if you guys see that, see how good that casting is? And then there's his weapon. Again, see how awesome it is? So Luke, if you're watching, this is something I think you'd love, especially with Warhammer kind of painting stuff recently. This is um, really cool stuff. So really impressed with this, how it's, you know, the look of it, the quality of it. From $15, you can't go wrong. So it's, if you're into bus, figure painting and busts and stuff, definitely check out Tusk Model. Again, T-U-S-K, and they're on AliExpress.com. Um, again, about $15 shipped to the door. You can't go wrong. Um, and it's just something a little bit unusual, but it looks kind of cool. So I got that one. I have quite a extensive selection of busts, but not have ever painted any. For me, that kind of is a little bit of a crossover from modeling to art, because when you get to the terms of like facial blending and painting eyes and stuff, it's that's a whole different world of um, genre of stuff. Yeah, I'm not quite my, um, it's above my pay grade, I think, but when you do 35th scale figures, it's okay, or 72nd scale figures, because you don't need to paint eyes, you just put a little wash in, it's good to go. But when you're getting up to like 110, you're gonna really paint the eyes, and I know arch decals do like the eyeballs and stuff, would make it a lot easier. But yeah, so I got the bust. Um, I guess going through it all, I've got the stuff here. I've done a review of this already, but I got this Wazbomb Warhammer blaster jet, the steampunky jet. Now, I know what you're thinking, that's the last five minutes, I've talked about two Citadel things. I've got a mold, mold line seam, mold seam, mold line remover, and I got a kit. So I'm not jumping down the hole and getting a Warhammer, but I got this because it's something a little different to kind of get my juices flowing, and I'm gonna. I think I mentioned this in my review, if you didn't see it, um, if you did, I apologize, I apologize, I'm repeating myself, but the, the deal with this is, I want to paint it like, I'm thinking maybe like RAF kind of Spitfire kind of colors, like with it adds more decals, Spitfire colors, kind of like this. And then maybe you can put like a 30 second scale RAF part of the next, I think it's about 30 second scale-ish. Um, and then do, do and then all the, Metallic work like steampunk, it like you not know, the iron or the metal, really kind of do it, weather it to, to you know, really weather it up and um, make it something really cool. So I thought that's something a little different to kind of break things up. I went back and looked, and um, every I've probably done an aircraft the past year, and since August last year, every single aircraft I've done has been great. So <laughs> I just put a stop to that and do something a little different. I'm a little sick of doing gray aircraft right now, so I'm definitely seeing with my green car and my KC 10, all well, that's going to be great. I'm kind of looking venture around, do some more things before I jump back into do more aircraft again. Um, but yeah, so that's a 
Games Workshop. Um, you guys build four different aircraft out of this kit. Different configurations and stuff. So I just thought it was cool, kind of look, something a little different. Um, yeah. Just, and these, go, these, go, these are really good kits, they go together really quickly, not many parts, and you get straight to the painting weathering, which I kind of dig. So, I've got that guy to check out. Next up, I don't do armor, but as I said to me earlier today, but I couldn't resist this guy. This is the um, Visor Aim on Toe. I just did a review of this guy, I think up yesterday, maybe I think it went up. Um, 16th scale, but it's a tanklet, 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 tanklet. So, it's tiny. It's, it's you see, it's a tiny little thing, so even at 16th scale, it's about the size of a normal 35th scale tank, but obviously the wheels are bigger, all the parts are bigger, and you get the figure too, so I thought this was a really good deal. It wasn't badly priced, I think it's about 50 bucks maybe, but you get the figure included, and 16th scale vehicle basically. So I thought, give that guy a go. Um, so again, something a little different. <laughs> if you don't see my review, but the, um, I don't know what deal, the bags are super crinkly. So my review was like half the length it should have been, because I had to edit all the crinkling out, because it was got crazy. But like, just like the bags are like, So noisy and crinkly. So my review, a lot of the time I was talking, I was opening the bag, so all that got edited out because it was just crazy the amount of um, crinkliness. So yeah, not, not, Tack and Multi have the crinkliest bags in, in modern making, I guess. So that also looked really cool kit. So again, something a little different. Keep your car scheme theme. I got this guy, the Meng. Um, so I built the Ravel old um, Wrangler. I think it's like a 2001, maybe. The um, CK, I think it is. Jeep, you've seen it, I think last time I showed you that guy, it was like, um, it's like a tank color one. So I built that, it was really a lot of fun. And um, so I saw this kit, and this was really, really hard to find. I don't know why, I think it's one of those kits where they came out, they got sold, and now you can barely find the hen's teeth. So when I put, put order from my usual place in England, they have these in stock for a reasonably price. So I added one of these. And um, not only is it a cool vehicle, but I actually own one of these. So back in 2012, just that guy there, it's Jeep JK. Um, I bought a brand new Jeep JK, a black one. I blacked it out, added a winch, added cool wheels, um, really pimped it out. And that was right then where the, um, the fuel price hit in the US. So I was getting, with the wheels, I was probably getting, I was living in Los Angeles at the time. So I was driving, commuting from Los Angeles, that crazy traffic. And I was getting something like, um, I think I was getting less than 10 miles per gallon, maybe like eight, nine miles per gallon with the traffic. And um, gas went up to $5 a gallon. And that was before they brought in the, the Pentastar engine. It was the older engine, so they'd, like I said, the fuel wasn't that great, the miles per gallon. So I was spending tons of money on fuel. It just wasn't efficient. So I had it for about a year. It was a lot of fun, and I traded it in and got um, something else. But that year I had it, yeah, but ironically, when I traded in, I got a really great price for it. I didn't get much less than what I paid brand new for it. So I think it's all the upgrades I did and stuff, but it's a cool Jeep. Um, you can buy an aftermarket set for it, but I bought it for the stash because, like I said, these are dwindling. I don't know why, but these are really, really hard to find. Uh, if you're on eBay, you're looking at like, I don't know, like 70, 80, 90, 100 bucks, ridiculous price. But it's a 24th scale, I believe. Yeah, 24th scale. Um, and I think it does come with the, I haven't opened the box, looked inside yet, but I believe it does come with a hard top. You can do it after, they do an aftermarket resin set too. We can get like the, um, like a roof rack and some, um, a different bumper and some like lights and stuff, which maybe I'll get. But yeah, it's, so I got the, the um, yeah, so this is JK Jeep Wrangler. And uh, it doesn't say the year, but mine was 2012, so I think this was around about the same time period, is what this one is, I guess. Yeah. So is that guy. And then, just literally right today, two more. So I got this guy. This was one of those kind of like impulse purchases. The new Edward Mustang. I'll do a review of this one too and put it up. Um, it's 48 scale Mustang. I don't know why I'm not picking to 48 scale war Warbirds. I think because I was building at the time I was building the Vigan in 72nd scale, and I was like, oh, I'm more into like small jets and small, small aircraft. So I got this guy, um, but then I realized I actually have the Tamiya 32nd scale Mustang with these decals, same, exactly the same markings in my stash, and I'm probably going to build it this year. So now I've got the 32nd, I, don't, I forgot about it, but now I've got this one, I probably won't, you know, I'll probably review it and then sell it because I don't think I'm going to build this one. So if I got the 32nd scale one, that's going to be a lot nicer than this one, I think. Um, but who knows? So they're the markings you get on it. It's kind of like you know the RAF markings on the Spitfire on the on the Mustang. Sorry. This is a new one out. The pro, it's a Profi pack, so it's not limited edition, so it should be pretty easy to find. But yeah, I just think the Mustang looks really cool. Um, I know it looks nice in the um, natural metal, but in the in the greens and stuff and the greys, I think it looks really looks good. Excuse me. All right. And last up is this guy. So before I. Let me 
before I kind of show you, talk about this one. So last few weeks, I got into um, into a new YouTube channel, um, mainly through, again, through Luke, I've mentioned a few times in the video, but Black Rifle Model Works did a um, review with a guy called um, Colin from Festa 76 Workshop. I watched the review and I thought, that guy seems like a really nice guy. Sometimes on YouTube you see stuff and you, people's personalities come across. And like, this guy seems like a really nice guy. And he had, he had a channel and he does really interesting stuff, like off the wall kind of things. So I started watching a few of his videos and then he does a lot of live streams. So I started getting into live streams and watching almost every one for the last like three weeks or so. So I really got sucked in. And they were building a, a Tallery bike. I think they're building a Triumph, like one of the World War II bikes. And a lot of people complain about these one mine scale, the bigger scale bikes, how crap they are, they'll go together. But both of these, there's two guys, there's Mike and um, Colin, are building these bikes as a buddy build and doing it live on stream. And the bike, not only the bikes are awesome and, and they did a great job, but they weren't having that many problems with it. It's all about, it's an old kit, it's all about old school modeling. Again, you know, seam lines, mold lines, taking care of, clean up, that kind of stuff. But to clean it up, it went together beautifully. So I had my, I've had my own this kit for a while, I'm about to show you, and I never pulled a trigger, I thought, it's a tower, tallery, or tallery, however you pronounce it. And it's going to be crap. I, I won't be able to build it. I'll lose my mojo. But seeing these guys on that stream do it, it kind of motivated me. So, like, you know what? It's, I can't, let's just do it. So, I got this kit, and it's a beautiful looking thing. It's the um, Norton Max motorcycle. And this is one mic scale. So, it's pretty big. It's going to be, you know, it's normally bikes of 112 scale, I believe. So, it's going to be, you know, sizable. You know, it's going to be pretty sizable. It's not going to be massive, but it's going to be, um, you know, it's probably going to be like, you know, that big. It's going to be decent. Um, it just looks a beautiful bit of bike and all, all this metallic, you see all the engine work on there and stuff with the white tank. You do white or silver, I really like the white tank. I thought that'd be a really cool build. So, not even opened the box yet. So, I took a plunge, I went on eBay and there's a guy selling these kits, like a dealer, really cheap. So, if you're looking for a one-life scale bike from a tallery, he had them all there. He had the Triumph there, he had this one. Like This was like, I think shipped to my house just over $40. And these go normally for like sixty, eighty dollars. So I thought it was a really good price. It's obviously brand new, all sealed. Um, he had a few, a few of them. He had all of them. And he said he had the um, the, the one night flight German bike and sidecar. He had the the Triumph. I don't know if he had the Harley Davidson, but he definitely had had these two. So I got this bike, which I'm probably do as my next build. So part of it, when I bought this at the same time, I bought this this mold line remover. So I'm going to need this because so this kit is actually older than I am, and it's um, from the 1970s. So it's reboxed by, it was, I think it's an old Pro Target, and it's reboxed, and um, the box also looks beautiful on the outside, nice, but the plastic is from Malta from 1970s. So it's an old kit, um, but I've gone online and seen a few people, and they have built them, and they say they go together pretty well. It's just, again, patience, just cleaning up all your parts and um, taking your time. But again, I think it's a really beautiful kind of bit of British kind of um, engineering there. And it's gonna look really nice, maybe a little base or something. So we're excited about this one. It got lost in the mail sometime. It, it went I don't know, between Florida and Virginia. It took like a week with priority mail. I don't know what happened, but it finally showed up today. And I'm looking forward to opening this up and taking a look at it. So again, it's an old 1970s kit. Um, hopefully it's not gonna to be too bad, but but again, it's just a beautiful subject and I can't, can't wait to get going on this one. That's it. So being a busy boy, I mean, this has gone way too long. I don't know if anybody stayed this long and listened to me for 40 minutes, but I think we're at 40 minute mark now. So I've been busy. Um, I held off doing, I was going to do a bench update about a week or two ago, but I held off because um, I knew I was waiting for a couple of parts to come in and the hammer is almost finished. So I held off. In hindsight, I probably should have done a video then and then another one, you know, next week or something to break it up a little bit. But a lot of stuff going on, a lot of new stuff, tons of content coming up on the channel. Um, I've got at least 50 videos being edited and ready to go and build videos and stuff just for the upcoming weeks. So, I mean, we, we're pretty solid for material for the next year or two, if you want to be on this channel. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Um, you get notifications when I start building all this stuff and putting up build videos and things like that. <sighs> so I'm going to take a break now. Um, be talking for 40 minutes to the camera and um, you're probably sick of hearing my voice. But so, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that one. I'll be back again probably in about three or four weeks. If I've got a bunch of stuff finished, I'll do something a little bit early. I don't want to knock out a 40 minute video again. I'll try to keep it a little bit more punchy for you guys. Um, but yeah, as always, any questions, feel free. To answer. I, ask, I respond to every single question. Um, as, as you guys know, would message me. And it's funny because often I get responses back from people saying, oh wow, you responded to me. It's like, well yeah, I respond to everybody. I think people are shocked that actually someone on YouTube actually responds to comments. I don't know why, but 
I think it's just common courtesy. If someone takes time to watch my video and leave a comment, I'll, I'll respond or um, heart or thumbs up to everybody. Um, but yeah, that is it. So have a great week, great weekend, and I'll see you next time.